Hello and welcome to Christ Fellowship Online. My name is Randy Armas and I'm one of the pastors here at Christ Fellowship. If this is your first time, please stop by cfmiami.org slash online after the service to fill out a connection card so that we can get better connected with you and you'll receive a free first time guest gift when you do. Now today, I'm joined by two members of our teaching team. I got Pastor Carlos and Pastor Rick. Thank you so much, Pastor Ray. Well, welcome uh, to Church Online and thank you so much for joining us right there in your home uh, today. You see, every weekend uh, we have this Church Online where thousands of people uh, hear the message of the gospel and they get to worship uh, together with us as a church family. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to leverage this incredible tool. Well, this weekend we're going to hit a pause on our All In series and you're going to hear an incredible message from our lead pastor, Pastor Omar, about hope. And so with that being said, I know many of you are dealing with the sickness of the coronavirus and we're gonna uh, continue uh, to be praying for you. Yeah, and you know, we'll be back together soon, face to face. We're looking forward to that. We'll keep you posted on that. In the meanwhile, we can all stay connected by joining each other online. In fact, today, Pastor Omar is gonna be bringing, like you said, Pastor Carlos, an amazing message that fits this time. And uh, right now though, let's join our worship team in a time of worship together.
we put our hope in you. God, we put our trust in you, even in our uncertainty, God. Amen. How great a chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And I spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my lady.
Hey, thank you so much for worshiping alongside of us and welcome once again to Christ Fellowship Online. If you're just joining us after the broadcast, I want you to visit cfmiami.org slash online and click to fill out that connection card so that we can get you connected to next steps here at Christ Fellowship. But also at that same website, you can click to give online. We want to encourage everyone to give faithfully to the Lord during this time because we're still meeting together for church here online. And so may God use you in your gift of giving right now. And church family, we are here to serve you during this difficult season. And because of that, this Wednesday, we are having live prayer uh, through Instagram and Facebook. It's going to be a special time. So we want you to gather around the computer and pray with us. And if there's anything that we can pray for, uh, make sure you fill out that connection card at this very moment. Our church is here to serve your needs. Yeah. In fact, can we take a moment right now and pray for you? Father, right now during this time, God, we pray for those who are affected directly by the coronavirus, God, and for their families. Uh, Lord, right now, we pray and we lift them up to you. God, we pray for complete healing over their bodies. And God, Lord, we ask for a cure to come very, very soon. Uh, Father, we pray for, for the church, God, to stand up in this time, God, that we can somehow be used by you to minister to people. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, we come before you, Lord, and I pray for all the healthcare workers, uh, every single uh, nurse, doctor, every single physician, uh, person who's working in these hospitals, Lord. Uh, they're not immune to this virus, and sometimes we think they may be. And so, Lord, as they are putting extra hours and effort and energy uh, to provide care and, and, and safety uh, to those who have been affected by it, Lord, I pray that you may give them strength uh, that you may protect them, and uh, Lord, may you uh, give them the energy, Lord, uh, to serve uh, our communities well, God. We are thankful for the sacrifice that they make. They are heroes in, in our city, in our com community, communities, and across the world, God. And Lord, we just pray a special prayer over uh, every single healthcare worker. And Father, we thank you so much for your care, your provision for us, and we pray for our congregation. Lord, we pray for our community that you would protect us from this virus, protect us from the spread of it. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Well, hey, Christ Fellowship Online, good to see you. My name is Omar, and I serve as a lead pastor here at Christ Fellowship. And obviously, today's a little different. Uh, we're not able to gather physically at our locations, but man, by the grace of God, He has given us technology to be able to gather together and uh, in one spirit to study God's Word. And so I am so glad that you're tuning in, and I'm excited to see what God has to share with us in the middle of all the stuff that's going on. It's so good to stop and to see what the Lord has in store for us, all right? So thank you for tuning in. And so before we begin, let me pray for us, and then we'll dive into God's Word. Father God, we are just so grateful of how good you are to us, that in every season of our life, we can come to you and we can rest in you. And Father, I want to pray for everyone that's been affected by this virus. Lord, you know the entire world, Lord has been affected in one way, shape, or form. And so, Father, we pray for those uh, who have been affected by them and who've lost people as well, Lord, as uh, the financial situation, Lord. We know that there's a lot of instability, but, Father, we know that we can come and rest in you. And so, Lord, we pray uh, for this teaching, O oh Lord. We pray that as we dive into your word, Father, you would give us eyes to see the truth in your word so that we could walk in obedience. So, Father, thank you, and uh, lead us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you know, before we begin, let me just read to you the passage for today. It's found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And so let me just read this up and set up the teaching for today. It says this. It says, and let us run with perseverance the race or the season that is marked out for us. And here's a key phrase. Fixing our eyes on who? On Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. That is the word of the Lord. You know, growing up, uh, the only organized sport that I ever played was actually baseball. And when I was young, I was actually pretty, pretty good. I mean, when I got older, middle school and high school, listen, I, all that talent went out the window. I was no good. But when I was young, I was actually Pretty good. In fact, I have a picture of myself when I was Little League Baseball. Yeah, I was in the San Diego Padres. There I am. 
And uh, man, those were good and fun times for me. But I remember early on, I was entering the, a new baseball season. My coach pulled me aside, and he told me the following thing. He said, Omar, if you want to be the best hitter possible this season, if you want to be as effective as you can possibly be in this season, then you need to remember to always fix your eyes on the most important thing. And that one thing was what? Was the baseball. He wanted to be sure that I always kept my eyes focused on the baseball. And here's why. Because he knew that when I would go up to bat, that when I would go up to a batter's box, it was easy for me to fix my eyes on my buddy on the stance. Or it was easy to fix my eyes on that girl that I had a crush on over there. Or, or perhaps fix my eyes on uh, the outfielder that's that just running back and forth. It's, it was easy for me to fix my eyes on everything else except the most important thing, which was the baseball. And here's why this is so important. Because if I took my eyes off the most important thing, here's what happened. If I took my eyes off the baseball, number one, I wouldn't be able to make proper contact. I wouldn't really then follow through on my swing. And here's what would happen. Throughout that whole season, I wouldn't be as effective as I could be, and I would go on to be discouraged. And it would all be because I didn't fix my eyes on the most important thing, which was what? which was the baseball. Now, folks, let me just bring all of that over to our time together today because what an image. As we enter into a brand new season, how important it is for us to fix our eyes on the most important thing. And by that I mean that just like I had to fix my eyes on that baseball, if I wanted to be the most effective hitter and go through the season successfully, Listen, just like that, and here's the big idea for this weekend for us. As, as each of us enter into this brand new season of the coronavirus, if we are going to go through this season successfully, if we're going to stay encouraged throughout this entire next season, then we need to fix our eyes also on the most important thing. Now, you may be sitting there at home or at a coffee shop, and you may be asking yourself, Pastor, what is the most important thing that I must fix my eyes on? What is that one thing? Well, we're going to find out from Hebrews chapter 2, right? So wherever you're at, go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 2 in your Bibles or in your app. You can take out a piece of paper. We're going to be jotting down some notes. Or you can open up your app and you can just follow along right there with the fill in the blanks. But I have two thoughts for us today on where we need to fix our eyes on as we enter into this season. Write this down as point number one. We need to fix our eyes on Christ. Fix our eyes on Christ. In fact, let's go to the passage for today that we read earlier. It says, it says this. It says, and let us run with what? With perseverance. The, ra the race or the season that is marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on who? On Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Now, slip into the scene with me for just a moment. Because the author of the book of Hebrews here is writing to a group of believers who are going through a very difficult season in their life. In fact, just two chapters earlier, he refers to the fact that these people had lost everything they had. All their property was plundered, and they were just in a very difficult position in their life with a lot of uncertainty. And it was easy for these people who he's writing to in these times to easily start to fear. Uh, they, they, could, they could easily start to panic with all this uncertainty. And folks, even though our property has not been plundered, the reality is that we're also, in a way, entering into a very uncertain season, aren't we? It's a season that could be filled with fear, uh, a season that could be filled with panic. But I love here that the author of Hebrews reminds them and, listen, reminds us today 
Listen, that the people of God have gone through times just like these. In fact, listen to what he says in verse 1. He says this. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. In other words, the author here is helping us understand that every single child of God throughout history has always faced difficult seasons in their life. And that the way that they endured those seasons by, was by fixing their eyes on Christ and keeping their trust in Him. You know, I particularly love this passage because it refers to these cloud of witnesses that are watching us as we go now, through this now. You know, this cloud of witnesses are all the, the people of God from years past, from centuries, from thousands of years past, that all have gone through difficult moments in their life. But the way that they persevered is because they stayed trusting the Lord. And it's almost as if they are looking at us down from heaven, and they're just cheering us on, hopeful, hoping that we too now, as we enter into another season, that we too would fix our eyes on the Lord just like they did. And so, so family, as when fear or panic on uncertainty starts creeping in, remember this, fix your eyes on Christ. Now keep this in mind. As we enter a season, as we fix, we need to fix our eyes on Christ and write this down as letter A if you're taking notes, and not on the media, not on the media. Now, I know that this is easier said than done, especially the way that things are being covered nowadays. You know, every morning, uh, I, I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, about around 6 o'clock, I make a pot of coffee, uh, I let the dog out to do his business, and then I just sit down and I just spend time with the Lord. I read, I pray, I just spend some time with him. And then around 7 o'clock, our little girl starts stirring a little bit. And so we get the milk ready and we wake her up, we change her. And we sit down on the couch just to give her milk. And every morning we turn on the news. And I got to tell you, and you probably know this, every single morning for the last two months, everything on the news has been this coronavirus and every single day is, you know, who's infected now and what's happening and how it's spreading and the testing and the financial markets and everything going on. And so I thought to myself, how terrible would it be for someone to wake up every single morning and just be inundated with everything that's going on with this frenzy and never go to God's word to hear from him? So I want to encourage you, listen, as a church family, that at the beginning of every single day, make it a point to wake up just a little bit earlier and listen, open God's word and be reminded of his sovereignty, be reminded of his love, be reminded of his purposes, be reminded of all the different truth in God's word so that when you do turn on the TV, when you do open up your app and you read the news, listen, so that every information, all the information that you're getting, listen, it's already filtered with God's truth. You know, if there's anyone that we need to hear from during these times, listen, it's not the media, it's the Lord our God, amen? Because he alone has truth and he alone can guide us. And so let's be like Peter who said this, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You know, during this season, people are going to tune in thinking that the media, the experts, the doctors, all these people, that they have the words of life. But we know who has the words of eternal life, and that is Christ the Lord. So be sure that you're, folk, that you're spending time in God's word. So don't fix your eyes on the media and also write this down as B. Do not fix your eyes on the virus, on the virus. Now let me remind you, this virus that seems 
so uncontrollable, uh, this virus that seems so deadly, let me remind you that it is in the complete and absolute control of the Lord, of Christ. You know, if you've been here at Christ Fellowship, you know that we've been going through a study of the book of Colossians. And in chapter 1, we've been learning how Christ not only is the one who spoke the world into existence, but the scripture also says that he holds all things by the word of his power. And we have seen how Christ even has control and dominion even to the most basic element, which is the atom. And so when we look at this, at this virus, listen, every single atom of every single cell, of every single, inside every single virus, inside every single person, listen, just know, it is controlled and sustained by Christ. Listen, he knows this virus better than anyone. He knows everything about it. Why? Because he's the creator of all things. You know, when I, when, when I get when, in the morning when, when I wake up in the news, a face that has been always on the news, and you've probably seen him, is Dr. Anthony Fauci, which is director of the National Institute of Infectious Diseases. And he is really our nation's leader uh, in, this, in this topic. And so every morning he's being interviewed by Congress, by politicians, by the media, by all these people. And what's interesting is that when they ask him questions, you know, he answers them to the best of his ability, but the reality is that he doesn't have all the answers. You know, he doesn't know where this virus is going. He doesn't really know all the details of it. Uh, he has questions himself of the spread of it, how it's going to move forward, how it's going to develop, how it's going to impact. He, he, just, he just can give some general answers, but he, can't, he doesn't have all the answers. And so I thought to myself, wow, the person who we're all looking towards in this nation, he doesn't have the answers. Why? Because he doesn't know. But we know, right? We know who knows this virus better than anyone, who's in control, and who is in complete dominion over all things, and that is Christ the Lord. So let's rest in him. So family, don't fix your eyes on the media. Uh, don't fix your eyes on the virus. And write this down as letter C. Don't fix your eyes on the financial uncertainty. You know, as I've just been processing and just really just thinking through all this, yes, there's going to be a lot of people affected during these upcoming weeks uh, with health issues, right? And, and it's, it's very sad to see how many people are being affected, and especially the elderly people have, they've been, you know, some of them have been passing away. It's just terrible. But I think the longer effects, the long-term effects of this is actually going to be in the economy. You know, these couple of weeks could be brutal for us. And we all know that during these times of financial uncertainty, many people go into depressions. Um, many people even venture to take their lives because of the uncertainty what's coming up of how much money they've lost. And, and, and so I really believe we're entering into a season where God willing, listen, the economy picks back up just as it's been, but we, can, we just don't know where it's going. And so what I find so interesting is that if you've been here at Christ Fellowship, you know you, we've been going through this series called All In. And during this series, we've been learning what it means for us to trust Christ as our all-sufficient provider, right? We've been learning what it means. And family, can I tell you, listen, I don't think that's a coincidence that God has led us through this series knowing that this was coming up because the Lord knew that this whole thing was about to ensue and he wanted to solidify in our hearts, in his children, listen, that, when, when, that our hearts will be ready when all this came and that we would stay trusting him and that we would be fully surrendering to him. And church family, I want to remind you, we don't know what's happening, what's going to happen in the future. And sometimes maybe your jobs may be affected, your income may be affected. We just don't know. But let me remind you, your job is not your provider. Christ is your provider. Sometimes we look at our 401Ks and we know how they've been dropping 30 40%. 
And uh, are they going to go up? We don't know. But sometimes when we see the stock market or mutual funds, all these different things go down. Listen, our retirement accounts are not our ultimate security. Our security is who? It's Christ the Lord. And so we've learned so much during this all-in season about what it means to trust Christ as a provider. Here's our time that we're going to put our theology to practice, right? And so I want to remind you what the Lord tells us in Matthew chapter 6, because there's, it's a passage we've all heard, but I think it just brings so much comfort. Listen to what he says. He says this. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father, what? He feeds them. Are you not more of value than they? And which of you, listen to this question, and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to a span of life? You know, we can worry as much as we want about this, but all the worry cannot even add a single hour to our life. And then he says this, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father, listen, he knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Family, what comforting words. Listen, when, when we see uncertainty about our future, financial stability, whatever, listen, God willing, it will go back to being normal and nothing will take place. But because we don't know, listen, we need to remember that regardless of what happens, whether things are great financially or things are not so great financially, we have a Heavenly Father who does not want us to worry. He wants us to rest in Him, and He wants us to know that He's aware of every single one of our needs. All right? So, listen, not, let's not fix our eyes on the financial uncertainty. Let's fix our eyes on the Lord. And last but not least, and let me end with this. Write this down as big number two if you're taking notes. Also fix your eyes on the mission of Christ. You know, the reality is that when we go through these moments in life, it's easy for people to start fearing, panicking, and they start being just so innerly focused, just so selfish. You know, when I was preparing for this teaching yesterday, my wife, Ashley, she went to the store just to go pick up some stuff and do whatever we can get for the future. And she was just appalled of how rude people were. They were cutting her off, saying nasty things, and even that thing, everything was crazy. It was completely empty. I mean, you've seen those images that there's nothing in the store. In fact, my aunts from London, they both went to the store and they freaked out when they couldn't find anything there. Why? Because everyone was so, so focused on what's happening in, in their life. And if we're not careful, the people of God could adopt the same mentality. That during these times, isn't that we just so focused about ourselves that we forget about everything else. But here's what I want to encourage you. During these critical times, my encouragement to you, write this down as A and B. Just remember those two things. Listen, capitalize on every opportunity and capitalize on every single conversation. Okay? You know, it's during these times is that peop, our people are longing for, uh, for hope. They're longing for stability. They're hoping for, for some sort of peace in their life. And you know what? They're going to try to find it somewhere, somehow. And we know exactly the only place where they can find the hope and the peace that they're longing for, and that is in Christ and his gospel. 
And so whenever you have a conversation with a friend and, listen, they are a little nervous about what's going on, man, take that opportunity to share the gospel with them. You know, when you're talking to a family member and they're concerned about their retirement account that's dropping, take the time to share how Christ is your all-sufficient provider, that you can rest in Christ. You know, when you go to the store and you see the cashier a little worried or a little just, just frazzled with everything going on, listen, take out that invite card and invite that person to church. You don't know this is the season where people, believe it or not, are most open to try to find some answers, to, to find what, what God has to do with all this. And so this is the perfect time. Meant to share God's love with people, tell them how much God loves them, what he did for them. And this is the time, listen, to share the gospel with the people that so desperately need it. That Christ came down to this earth to die for our sins and resurrect a new life so that those who put their faith in him could have everlasting life. Right? That's the message. And listen, this is the message we've been entrusted with. And we need to capitalize on every single opportunity and every single conversation. Be, let, let the Spirit guide you on how to have those conversations. Now, before I end, you know, you may be watching right now. You may be tuning in for the very first time, and we're glad that you're tuning in. Maybe you've been coming to church for a couple of weeks, and deep down inside, you know, you know, that you don't have a relationship with the Lord. You know, you know of God, and you're open to the things of God, but deep down, you know that you are not right with God, that you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You, you've heard of him, but you don't really know him. And so you're thinking, Pastor, listen, especially during this season, I know that I need to start a relationship with the Lord. I, I, I want to start my walk with Christ. And so, Pastor, how can I do that? What, what, what do I need to do? Can I, can I have start a relationship with Christ? Well, Scripture says this. He, the Scripture says, for whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not most people, not the best of us, but every single person that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so you may be sitting there at home right now or wherever you're at, and you're thinking, Pastor, how do I call on the Lord? I mean, this tuning in now, is this considered calling on the Lord, uh, going to church. I'll go back to church whenever I can. Uh, uh, do, do I got to fill out a paper, get sprinkled? Are there any good things that I got to do to, to call on the Lord? Well, the Bible's very clear. Listen, all those things will never, there's a good things, but those things will never help you start a relationship with Christ. Those, the only thing the Scripture says is when you come to a point where you put your trust and your faith in Christ, when you, put, when you put your trust and faith of the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, and the Bible says that the moment that you put your faith in him, here's what happens. First of all, he forgives you of all of your sins, all those things you're ashamed of that you've never shared with a soul. Listen, God knows them, and he for, wants to forgive you of those sins. Then he says that, he's, that he, you start a relationship with the Lord that will never end. From that point on, listen, he gives you eternal life. You start a relationship that will never end through this life, but also will carry on for all of eternity. And so if you want to know what it means to, to become a, a believer, to come, become a Christian and start your walk with the Lord, it's very simple. It's just going to the Lord in faith and saying, Lord, today I put my trust in you and I surrender my life to you. It's so easy, but it's so important. And so you're thinking right now, well, Pastor, I want to do that. I, I want to start this relationship. I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to be able to to start this, this relationship with the Lord. So if that's you, listen, wherever you're at, I'm going to lead you through a prayer. And this prayer is not a poem. It's not a script that we got here at Christ Fellowship. Listen, it's just me doing my best to help you speak, talk to your Heavenly Father for the very first time. And so as you pray, listen, don't pray to me. I, listen, I cannot save you. I cannot do anything for you, but only the Lord. He's the one that's waiting to listen to you, to embrace you. Uh, we always tell people, you know, he's not waiting for you like this. With judgmental arms, he's open, waiting for you like this, right? With open arms, he's been waiting for you. And so right now, if that's you, if you want to start a relationship with Christ, pray this along with me and pray this to the Lord. Let me pray with you. Pray this with me. Father, I come before you in the midst of of all this chaos, and I realize that I need you. And so, Lord, I come before you, 
and I confess all of my sins. Everything I've done, I confess it. And today I'll come before you and I put my trust and my faith in you. No longer do I fix my eyes on all the things of this world, but Lord, I fix my eyes on you today. And so Lord, I ask you to save me today and give me everlasting life. And from here on out, Lord, help me to live a life that honors you and glorifies you. Thank you, Lord, that I have you even in the middle of this season, Lord. I know that I will always have you for all of eternity. Thank you, Father. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, if you're out there and you prayed that prayer, listen, I am so excited and happy for you because putting your trust in Christ is the absolute most important thing you could ever do. And if you did that, listen, I am so proud of you. And us as a church, listen, God didn't design your journey with the Lord to be by yourself, you know, not knowing anybody, but he designed you to be part of God's family and, to, and for us to help you in your walk with him. And so if that's you, listen, I know it's easy for you to turn off the broadcast right now, but I want to encourage you, right below me, there is a link. Go to that link, fill that out, whether you're a first-time guest or maybe if you came to know Christ today, go to that link and, and fill that card out. And someone from our team will contact you, and we're going to start giving you resources, helping you get connected, and helping you take steps in your walk with Christ, right? So don't shut this off. Go to that website, fill that card in, and we'll follow up with you um, fairly soon, all right? Well, Christ Fellowship, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, man, even though we couldn't meet together, I know that the Lord is at work and he's leading us because he is our good shepherd, all right? So let's continue trusting him, fixing our eyes on the Lord, and we cannot wait to see how God is going to use all this for his purpose. I love you, Christ Fellowship. Have a great week. Stay safe. Wow, what a powerful message we heard from Pastor Omar on Hope today, and we pray that it impacted your life. If it did, please tell us about it. Go ahead and stop by cfmiami.org slash online and click to fill out a connection card so that we can help you with your next step. Awesome. And church family, do not forget this Wednesday, we're going to have our live prayer chat through Facebook and Instagram. So make sure that you join us in this uh, challenging season. And next weekend, uh, join us back again for church online. Yeah. And Christ Fellowship, we love you all. Please know that you are in our prayers.